Hello everyone! Welcome back for yet another Magic the Gathering Duels of the Planeswalkers 2014 video with yours truly, pen 2 m 2 So I'd say, let's get a beer and let's talk some magic! Today we'll be talking about uh, one of my personal favorites I uh, really like decks uh, that have cards that boost other cards in order to uh, get some big creatures on the table and the Sliver deck uh, is a very good example of that, so we're going to be talking about the Sliver Hive deck. Um, I've uh, played it a little now, I've unlocked around 10 cards, and uh, yeah, I went to the deck manager, uh, and uh, I think uh, one of the f most primary things about a deck uh, is that, that you need to have a theme or a strategy, so to say. So you need to have an idea behind the deck. This might may sound uh, rather uh, obvious to to, uh, to most of you, but I just want to talk about uh, yeah about it a little more in depth um, because if you look at at all the magic cards out there, uh, there are not really that many bad cards, especially in this in this game. Almost all the cards are good. So how do you decide which ones to take out and which which ones you don't? And I think yeah, uh, the basic idea behind this to put up a strategy uh, and use it to your maximum effect. And I think this sliver deck um, has both some very obvious strengths and weaknesses. I think one of the weaknesses of is of course that it has three mana types, so you have to have some way to make sure uh, you don't get screwed at the start. Because if you have a lot of white cards in your hand and you don't have one white mana, yeah, you can't do anything. I think the second bad part about the sliver deck is that it's a little bit situational. If you get the right sliver decks on, on uh, sliver deck cards on the table, and they boost each other, you're gonna win early and have a very strong victory. But if you don't get them quickly enough, and again we're going to be playing the zombie deck, surprise! If we don't push, uh, put enough pressure on the zombie deck early, they are going to multiply their zombies, and we don't have anything against enchantments. So that means, yeah, we're pretty much dead because we don't have any flying creatures. We rarely get a creature on the table that's able to, to, to beat up like 10 zombies. So the only hope we have here, if we want to unlock cards fast, and that's our strategy right now, is to get as much creatures on the table as fast as we can, and make sure we get the damage in early. So that's the, the strategy I put up behind this deck. Well, if we uh, look at the cards I, I, uh, I took out. First of all, this one. Uh, I do have some of these in because I like having a lot of sliver creatures and I have a few cards in there that give me an advantage if I have more than one sliver. On the other hand, we don't want too many of these in because the slivers we get with this card do not give bonuses to our other slivers. So, it's situational. I did leave some in but I took one out to, to, uh, to get to the magic six, uh, 60, the sweet spot. Uh, this one is a, yeah, sort of a pacifism with 4 life extra for yourself. It's okay, but it's rather expensive, and it's too expensive for my strategy, so I took it out. The Blur Sliver, um, it's of course a good card, but I have two of these in, and it has no advantage for me to have two of these on the table. If I have one, it gives all my creatures haste. If I have two, I do not have two times haste. So I kept two in and took one out in order to get one of them on the table. To have a pretty good chance to get one of them on the table, but I don't want two in my hand. So, two in, one out. Then we go to the Rampant Growth, um, we need to have some of these in because we have 3 mana types to mitigate our weakness there, but I don't want too many lands drawing cards in because I don't have that much problems. Because we're all also using the Sacrifice lands, I will uh, point, point it out later, which will allow us to choose one of the manas we don't have in our hand. So This is a strong card, but I want to maximize my slivers in my hand, so not too much, so take one out. Same goes for Cultivate, strong card of course, but we don't want to end up with two Cultivates at the start, so I kept two of these in and took two out. These, um, on one hand, I'm, I'm a bit torn on this one. On the one hand I think it's good to have like a crowbar in your deck to break open uh, another, uh, another person's deck when you have a sort of a standoff, and this creature might just do that because it, because it gives you Trample, uh, because it might be bigger than the rest because it has a, a stronger base strength and toughness. On the other hand, it's seven mana, so by the time we get to play this, we're around turn seven or eight, and if we're still not 
damaging him badly around turn 7 or 8, we're pretty much dead. So I think f against the zombie deck we're going to take it out. Later on if we fight some other decks I'm going to be videos, uh, making videos on that as well. After I've done all the basic uh, unlocking videos then I'll put it in. But uh, for now, out of there. Both of them. These are decent-ish cards. I mean, 3 mana, 2-2. Two, two. On the other hand, this liver does not boost my other slivers. Again, it's not strong enough. It's a good card, but it's not strong. So, don't put it in. Out there. And that's what we all took out. Let's have a look at what we have in there. To give a general idea of the deck. Of course, these. Th this is the lands I was talking about. Terramorphic Expanse allows me to search my, my library for a basic land card very important and something that some people might overlook and I think is very important as well these cards are still lands I mean they are only usable the turn after because they give you a tapped land but they're still lands so you want to count these four to watch your total land amount because if you don't you have too much lands in there and your sliver uh, you don't get enough slivers in your hand so count these four with your total number of lands to come to the number of total lands you want. In my case that's usually 25 but seeing as this is a pretty land specific deck because it has three colors I put in one land more. So I have 24 of a 21 here plus the 4 is 25. Ah I didn't even put one extra in. Okay yeah that's because we have the land searching cards. Um, I might put one or two more in later if I get too many mana problems but for now we're gonna try and keep it lean and mean my usual strategy. So we have some slivers that give us, uh, let's see, first strike, some exiles, some shocks, alt kill and exile some zombies. Get some 1-1 one, one, uh, sliver boosters, two of the mana searching cards, plus uh, uh, zero, uh, plus one. And those are actually rather useful, because if I get to play one of these I have a 2-3 and I can kill zombies. So very, very useful card for against the zombie deck, even more powerful than you would guess uh, at the start. Then we have two of our haste slivers. This allows us uh, to give uh, 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 an attacking boost to all our creatures. And when we attack with five slivers, that's going to be very strong. So this could possibly be a crowbar card, to, uh, as I call it, a card to break open the other person's uh, standstill. And this card is just great against zombies. Five damage divided. If I have a 1-1 one, one creature or a 1-1 one, one sliver on and I attack with that and he blocks it, we play this card and we destroy three zombies. Basically killing his deck. So great card against the zombie deck. Then we're here. This is the sliver token deck. Uh, again, some of the slivers are useful. For example, in combination with this card, but I don't want three in. I only want two in. And I might even take a few out later if I get some better cards. Two cultivates to get us some mana. Then we have some uh, double strike uh, slivers, some of the strongest we have. Two indestructible cards to make one of my slivers very strong uh, in order to be able to block some of his strong creatures he might get on later. And uh, bifur bifurcate, uh, search a library for a permanent card with the same name. Very nice if I have uh, some nice slivers on and I want to boost my cards even more. This is uh, also one of the best cards out there if you have like five slivers you can do five damage when you attack and just slaughter some zombies every time you attack. So also a very powerful card. <coughs> a normal plus two plus zero uh, sliver. And some plus two plus two ones which are also very great. So all in all it's a very strong deck now I think. Um, we will have to see how well it does against zombies but that's a little bit the theme of these series, to, to unlock cards fast. Um, also one of the things uh, I do with this deck, which you uh, could consider doing as well, if I get very little land in the first two or three draws, sometimes I restart. It's uh, it's maybe a little lame, but it allows you to uh, to at least get a, a decent tish hand. I'm not going to do it to get a strong hand each time, but I'm not going to be starting with four cards or something. That's just uh, a bad idea. That's about it. Let's head out and play a game. Ramaz Let's see. This isn't bad. I could make a f mountain out of this one. 
play this shock something and get a planes with this one so it's not a bad start we don't have great slivers but I'm gonna keep it try to play this one first so we can shock when we want Surprise, surprise, it's a zombie. Okay, as I um, as I see it, I can take two routes now. Uh, I can either shock his zombie and shock the next one. Or I can play some slivers myself, uh, not block him and, uh, and try to get some presence on the board. I think playing some slivers here is better because uh, he has some cards. He has a zombie that he's going to play in turn 3 or something that allows him to return one zombie from his graveyard. So after we played it, I'm going to be shocking him, uh, but un until then, I'm not. So, play the creature, Let's see how the game develops. the next on me let's see do we want to get a land yeah let's see do I want to shock something already can still take the damage don't sacrifice your slivers you need to be boosting them later on it's probably not going to play the zombie yet nope. I think it's going to play next to get another mountain which is very nice so could start shocking but he can get one back no play the slivers first mm, yeah let's do some damage do an extra damage because of this card I like it a lot Shoot some spikes. Bam. Okay, buddy. Time to play your extra zombie so we can start shocking some zombies. And he's not playing it yet. Sure. Excuse me. Let's see. Do I want to make it in this? If I make it indestructible, I can keep damaging him. I like that a lot. If I play this one, I have haste, I can attack with three, but they are weak. Uh, I don't want to kill them yet, because I'm planning to do that later. So it's going to be indestructibility on my... this one. There we go. Attack with this one. Do him 4 damage because it's probably not going to block. Nope. Down to 14. 13. Great. <coughs> so things aren't looking bad right now. Knock knock. So I'm hoping he's going to play his extra zombie now. If I don't kill the zombie now, 
or uh, in my turn he's going to get an extra zombie at the beginning of his turn and that's going to multiply exponentially and I have no way to kill this enchantment uh, I was expecting him to play the third zombie but he hasn't yet because, because he doesn't have one in a graveyard yet so I think this is the moment because we have one mana left in his turn to start shocking Great. Okay, let's sacrifice this one. Get another sliver on the table. Get us some haste and why not do it all the way then? To the people uh, asking uh, themselves, uh, why I don't use the attack all button? I'm kind of uh, strange in that way. I actually like tapping my creatures. So that's why I do it manually. Just so you know. I like it. Playing against the zombie deck. Who doesn't have any zombies on the table? I mean, <laughs> how great is that? Uh, oh, he's dead. We won. Boom. Boom. Let's see if we get a nice unlock. Another path to exile. Of course it's a great card, but it does give him an extra land. Which isn't always a good idea. I think two is enough. So I'm going to be taking one out. This may be surprising me, because I don't think a lot of people like this card, but... I think two is enough. Well, I'm feeling lucky here. Let's play another one. Ramaz gave... Great start, nice lands. Uh, no creatures though. Pooh, this is a difficult choice. I have a lot of nice lands here. Actually, perfect lands. Got another card to get some nice extra land. But I don't have a creature in my hand, which is kind of problematic. Because in the next maybe two or three turns, if I get lucky. I might get two slivers out of three cards, and that's not enough to pressure him. So even though this is a great mana hand, I think I have to draw a new one. Yeah. Mm. Ah, let's gamble. Why not? Maybe I should have done this at... Ah, oh, no, it doesn't matter. Maybe I could have done it in his turn, so he wouldn't have one extra mana this turn, but... I think he doesn't have another card, one mana cost, so it's not really a problem. Okay. Really hope we get a creature here. Mm. 
wanted to show you what happens if you do kill them early. So he has a zombie back now. And we'll be playing it again next turn. It's not really a problem. Uh, let's see. Do I want to be able to block a zombie or do I want to get more mana? Oop. Very useful. The steel farm sliver. Able to kill a zombie without dying. Surprise! So let's see, what do I want to do? Do I want to get more mana? Not really, I have enough. Do I want to make it indestructible? Yes, because that allows me to attack. Do I want to exile one? Yes, because that allows me to attack as well. Hmm. Less zombies is better. And I can play this one as well. Very nice. Those not bad. We are kind of dependent on what we draw right now, though. That's why you want to keep your uh, your deck as strong as possible as well, because the difference now to win or not can be in whether we draw a decent card or a good card. Ooh, that's a good card right now. Mm, is that useful? No, we can just block. bad card. Luckily it isn't so big this time. Mm, we'll get a shock. Oh, it's good to remove a zombie. Oh, that was kind of stupid. Oh, that was stupid. What I should have done is attack with my 4-4. He would have maybe blocked it with his 4-5 and then I could have killed it with shock. It was a little bit too quick there. But as long as you recognize your own mistakes, it's okay, I guess. Oh, that was stupid as well. Should have picked another land. On a roll here. Uh, okay, let's see. Can I do something? No, nope, not really. Right now, I think time is really of the essence. And if I get one or two good cards now, I can put under pressure. If I do not, he will get more zombies and I lose. And even if I do, I'm going to upload this video just to uh, give you an idea of what to watch out for in the zombie army. Should have really tried to kill that 4-5. I think I lost the game there by not attacking with my 4-4. That's indestructible and then shocking his picks on me. That would have allowed me to, to continue attacking with, my, with this one and uh, yeah. Ooh, okay. That's really a great card for me right now. Uh, let's see what happens if I attack. Of 
gosh, this one's going to attack. Uh, if I attack, with, let's see, 15, just 12, 27, 27 power. He has 7. Twenty two toughness of twenty four. A hmm. little bit more. Hmm. Basically the problem with with a sliver deck is if you attack and uh he blocks some of the slivers that give combat bonuses to others, you suddenly are are left over with a few very weak uh creatures. Hmm. On the other hand, if I don't kill some zombies this turn, he's gonna get a lot of some more zombies next turn, and I'm screwed as well. So, I think I'm going to attack with everything that's expendable. See what happens. Uh, is this one expendable? Yeah, it is. This one. Not really, but yeah, let's go for it. I think this is the best option in this case. Go for an all-out assault. He has 16 lives left. He won't be willing to take like 8 damage or something, probably. So if he starts blocking stuff, and he blocks this one with 4 of his tokens, blocks this one with 3 of his tokens, he doesn't have any more zombies left, and we're kind of in the safe for a while, even though we lose like 2 creatures. So, And this one is the most important, because it gives us plus 3 plus 3, so... I think this is the best idea. Let's see what happens. Interesting. Okay, that didn't go so bad. Kind of like I expected. We lost uh, this one. But he lost a lot of tokens. But okay. I did not know about that card. Whoa! I'm dead. I'm very, 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 very dead. Whoa. Well, that's of course also a very useful card, but still. Dead. Uh, let's see here. 13 tokens. Man, that BTS. Poof. Uh, yes, 13 tokens. Plus these two. So he has 15 times 15 tokens. With another one, 16 creatures. I can block 5, so 11 creatures will get through. And those e do each damage so if I don't attack this turn I'm dead next turn okay and if I attack I'm dead as well but okay let's just charge him if I don't do anything I'm dead next turn so nothing to lose <laughs> yeah I was kind of afraid he was going to do that okay I lost that's a very strong card for him I hadn't seen it before <laughs> and he has another one. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. Just attack me with everything and I die. Come on. Don't prolong the suffering. I know I'm dead. Stop enjoying it, zombie bitch. Come on. No. We lost. I failed. Well, 
I hope that was uh, educational as well. I'll uh, keep it in the video because it, I think it uh, it uh, teaches everyone uh, what happens if you uh, mess with the zombie deck in the wrong way. It uh, goes uh, wrong terribly. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, I'll be uh, posting another sliver, vi sliver video when uh, I have like 20 cards unlocked. And I'll be unlocking some more decks to po post some more videos for you all. I hope you enjoyed it. If you do, please leave a comment, uh, a like, or maybe even subscribe to my channel to help me build my channel and get some more views. And uh, yeah, I'd say uh, look out for some more videos on my, my behalf. Uh, thanks again for watching. I'm Ben2M2. See you all next time.